So I wanted to make a video tonight to talk about Apple's new announcement today. Apple uh, announced a uh, new Mac called the Mac Studio. And I want to talk real quickly about whether or not you can use this Mac for, for doing development. So short answer, if you want to save yourself some time. First, if you like this video, please subscribe. Uh, if uh, you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Or you can give it a thumbs down if you don't like it, but please give it a thumbs up. So uh, the short answer to that question is yes, you certainly can use the, uh, the Mac Studio for development. And so I wanted to talk about what are some of the different options and uh, why this may be the correct computer that you want to use for, for doing software development. So this is the, the new Mac Studio. Uh, and they have a couple different configurations. They also have a new uh, uh, monitor uh, if you want to use with that as well. Uh, the thing that's really nice about this is that it comes with two different types of chips. Uh, one of the chips that it comes with, uh, these are both Apple Silicon based chips. But one's the M1 Max, and there's a new chip called the M1 Ultra. And uh, they're both uh, seem like they're very powerful uh, CPUs. Obviously, the, the new one, the Ultra, is the, the really powerful one. But they're claiming that just with the M1 uh, Max version of this machine that you get 50% better performance than a uh, Mac Pro. So that's a pretty, uh, uh, I think, a pretty good performance increase if it's true. Uh, but... Let's go ahead and start taking a look at what are some of our options uh, for developing with this if we want to. So the first thing I was going to say is that anything that was originally written to run on Intel-based Macs, uh, in theory you can run almost everything using Rosetta. Rosetta 2 is basically a new version of Apple's translation software which will take x86 code and run it on the Apple Silicon, uh, Apple Silicon chips. Uh, that being said, there's some situations where that is not ideal. I think for most software that you run, uh, it's not a problem. You can run most things without a problem if it was originally written for the uh, x86-based chips. Uh, but for a lot of the stuff that developers use, uh, you're not going to get the kind of performance that you ideally you would like. But that being said, the picture today is much better than it was when the original M1s were released. I guess back in uh, 2020. So let's take a look and one of the first tools that a lot of developers use is Homebrew. And Homebrew, when uh, the M1 was originally released, uh, uh, most of the software was originally uh, was originally written for x86. Now a lot more of the software, a lot more of the tools that we use have been recompiled uh, and there's binaries now for the Apple Silicon based processors. So uh, you certainly can use the Homebrew. Uh, I, it's a tool that I use. So that's one of the tools. Uh, the next one I want to take a look at here is Xcode. So Xcode uh, has been able to run on the M1 processor since they were initially released. But if you're doing uh, iOS, tvOS uh, development, uh, you're not going to have a problem here either. The next thing I want to talk about is Android Studio. So when the M1s were initially released, uh, the picture was not that great for, for, for doing development. Uh, now they actually have an uh, image that's set up automatically for the, uh, the ARM-based uh, processors. So if you download this one right here, uh, this is the one that you can use for developing for uh, for the Android uh, phones, and I believe they also they have uh, good emulator support now as well. So uh, that picture has looked a lot better as well. Uh, if you're using the Visual Studio Code, this is a tool that I use quite a bit. Uh, it's been recompiled uh, and it runs natively now. Uh, there's a universal downloader, which means that the application will run on uh, x86-based Macs or on uh, Apple Silicon-based Macs. So that is in good shape. Uh, IntelliJ, so if you're doing any uh, Java development or using any of the IntelliJ-based uh, uh, IDEs, Android Studio is an example, is a IDE that is based off of uh, IntelliJ. This also runs natively on Apple Silicon. 
So that's, that looks good as well. Uh, if you're just doing Java development, uh, there is a version of the uh, Java architecture that will run on uh, the Apple Silicon based processor, so you can do that as well. Um, this right here is talking about installing Python. Uh, Python, uh, I believe, is a version that comes pre installed on, on Mac OS, uh, but if you want to install, uh, Python 3 and use that. Uh, that is now also native. You can just use Homebrew to install that as well. Uh, the next one here is Node.js. And so a lot of the tools, a lot of the tools that developers use are based off of Node, uh, or you just may be developing Node applications. Um, since version 16, uh, this is a universal installer, so you could install this and run this on any of the Apple Silicon based Macs. So that's good as well. Uh, people that do a lot of mathematical type of processing, analytical type of processing, R has become a very popular language for doing that. Uh, R also has a package that runs on the Apple Silicon based uh, Macs. Just look for ARM64 uh, for the installer. .NET. So if you're doing .NET development, uh, specifically if you're using one of the newer versions of .NET, uh, you can run this uh, and write for Mac OS on the, uh, on the new Apple Silicon. You just need to download the ARM64 SDK and you're good to go. Uh, so this is some instructions here that I have. I'm gonna put all these links here uh, onto, this, uh, onto this YouTube video. Uh, but this is a uh, example of how to get uh, Java installed and running on uh, the Apple Silicon based Macs. So I'll put that link up there as well. Uh, here is the installer uh, that you can use for installing uh, Java on the uh, on the Macs, and they have a ARM64 based uh, image right here that you can use for installing Java on your Macs. The next one I was going to show is uh, Golang, and so uh, they've had, I believe for about a year, they've had a, uh, a, a basically a version of this uh, language that you can run on the Mac. So if you're doing Go development, uh, you can do that natively as well on, on the new Apple Silicon based Macs. Uh, the next thing I was going to talk about is Rust, the Rust programming language. Rust has become a lot more popular. Uh, in the last couple of years, um, it's meant to be a replacement for for C. Uh, as a matter of fact, I believe now in Linux, uh, they're starting to uh, use uh, Rust as one of the programming languages for working on the kernel. Uh, and this has a target that you can use as well. Uh, and this is based off of the, L uh, the, the compiler for Rust is based off of LLVM, which is the same compiler technology that's used for uh, Swift and C and C++ in the Mac. So uh, there's really good support for, for Rust uh, with the Apple Silicon-based processors. Uh, the next tool a lot of developers use is Docker. And uh, there's been a version of uh, Docker that runs on the Apple Silicon chips. The one thing I'll say about that, there's a caveat here. Um, uh, if you're trying to build uh, containers using Docker that you want to deploy to uh, basically ARM64 based machines or Intel uh, x86 based machines, uh, you, it is possible using the new version of Docker to actually build a uh, container that will run on either architecture. And they have a tool called BuildX that you can use for, for doing that. Uh, I personally have not uh, used this for, for deploying out onto uh, uh, basically a, an x86 based uh, a server using uh, ARM64. And this may be one of the places where, you know, if you're doing all of your development uh, for, for servers that run on uh, x86 type of architecture, you may want to continue developing using machine and not use Apple Silicon uh, for doing that. But that being said, it is possible to develop for both uh, on the same machine. So the next thing uh, to talk about is Electron. Electron is a very popular uh, tool set for building cross-platform applications using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. 
Uh, I think they've had a version of this that's been available for Apple Silicon uh, for, for about a year. So the support for that is looking pretty good. You should be good to go if you want to use Electron. Uh, and then the last part I want to talk about is virtualization. So uh, there's a couple of different tools here if you want to be able to run different operating systems on uh, Apple Silicon based Macs. Uh, these are uh, virtualization for the most part versus uh, emulation. Uh, so for instance, I believe with Parallels, uh, when you want to run Windows using Parallels, it's the, going to be the ARM64 based version of Windows. And uh, there's, you know, a lot of software that runs on Windows uh, that's x86 based that doesn't necessarily run on the ARM64 based version of, uh, of Windows. But I'm hoping Microsoft uh, has a better development picture for that uh, now that uh, seems like a lot of other companies are starting to target the ARM64 based architecture for, for development. Um, if you're like VMware and using VMware Fusion, uh, there is a, uh, a technical preview of this that's available. Uh, I don't think they've released a, an actual, uh, I guess, production version of this. Uh, but VMware, obviously, uh, that's part of their, their business is selling to uh, Mac users. So hopefully they'll have a solution for that. And the last thing I was going to mention as far as the virtualization is that there's this uh, UTM uh, product here, which is based off of, uh, I think, uh, key to you. Um, and uh, this allows you to run different operating systems as well. And I believe uh, there's a version of this that's, uh, that's free. But uh, this is another option if you want to be able to run uh, uh, different operating systems uh, on, your, on your Mac. So I think now, especially with these new high-end uh, Macs that are coming out, uh, this is going to be a lot nicer picture, especially with the amount of memory. Like uh, there's a version of the Mac Studio that has uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM. And so in theory, you can run all kinds of different stuff all at the same time. And there's, you know, a gazillion cores now, however many, it's like 64 cores. I forget how many cores are on these uh, these new Mac Studio based Macs, but uh, uh, it's definitely gotten a, a lot nicer. The original M1 Macs that were released were essentially were uh, you know basically entry level uh, processors. Um, you could develop using those. Uh, you still can actually, but uh, I think that uh, uh, with the M1 Max, M1 Pro, and now the M1 Ultra. Uh, these are much better machines for, for doing software engineering on. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can give it a thumbs down, but please give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to the channel. I'll do more content like this. Have a nice evening.